He shit. cheated on me with my best friend. Oh, so shit. honestly, are you also adopted? This is your daily catch up. Okay, okay, welcome. We have a guest today. Hi. New, 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 new. Hey, nice. <laughs> so, Naomi Neo is here with us today. Hi, Naomi. Hi. Can you introduce yourself to people who don't know you? Uh, the niece is a little bit starstruck. I, I want to say, yeah. before you arrive, she be them kind of Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For what? You are the first su- superstar I've seen. Superstar? Eh? <laughs> Every Ever day heard that in a while? Office with me, the last superstar I've seen. Steven Nime. Right, yeah, superstar. That was a <laughs> um, So, yeah, I'm Naomi Nyo. I've been vlogging, blogging for like maybe the last decade. So, you're the auntie. How old are you now? Uh? 26. Oh, f. What? Yeah. That's so young. <laughs> I worked with you when you were a child and now you're still yeah, a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. that sounded a bit weird. Yeah, so weird. I worked with you when you were a child. Yeah, we, we know each other from like maybe way back seven back. years ago. Yeah, yeah, wait. But back. I haven't seen you in three years, I think, yeah. at least. Wait, sorry, Since- can I ask, is the mic covering her face? Uh? Yeah, she's so small. Uh. <laughs> and Kat, is, if yes, do we lower worry? I feel not even on the floor. Eh. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> Stop observing no, me. Yeah, I swear, I think, Stop it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to say all the all the difficult questions coming from Denise today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be easy on you. <laughs> yeah, the curious one, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The curiosity is <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So I think like Naomi has mentioned, she started out with blogging, right? So you actually started out really young mm-hmm. as a child when John worked with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does sound weird coming from someone else now. <laughs> so if I'm not wrong, it started around 15 years old. Um, 15 is the official age that I tell people. Eh? La. But, but it goes the... way back. Because I think I started a blog probably around 11. Wow. Yeah, 10 or 11. <laughs> but the stuff you talk about, you probably <clears throat> say to share. No, no. <laughs> Feel free, man. I think it started off because I was not very... Um, Sociable. Not say not sociable eh. Like, but the it's, internet say one or one. Yeah, no. it's just that. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, so anyway, like back then was just, okay, maybe it was cause like it was a trend to have a blog. Everyone did, yeah. right? All my seniors did. So um, it started off with more like uh, just for more, you know, like everyone had a blog. So oh I, my God, is it, is it, was Demi? No, no, I actually didn't know her until I was probably around, I, I think after I joined uh, right, 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 right. the same management. So like back then it was just, <laughs> smooth. Yeah, so. Back then, it was just like, you know, just exploration, you know, right. just like having fun and all. And then after that, uh, when I progressed to like secondary school, it was more of like a sharing my life experiences because no one in my life could understand what I was going through. So mm. like, obviously, like I had a bit of distance with my parents as well. Mm. They're a bit different, I guess, from, I wouldn't say different, but more like conservative. Is so it? Like, yeah, they are. So surprised. It, it really, <laughs> it really surprises everyone. started blogging at 11. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was also kind of the, I want to do what I want to do kind of thing. Yeah. So like, I didn't really listen to them. La. Then I just continued doing what I want to do. Yeah. Then after that, it was more of just sharing everything that I couldn't share with anyone. Right. Yeah, but your so parents didn't know that you had a blog. They knew, but they weren't, how do I put it? Uh? So it's more like, People will tell them things and right. then they will come to me like this and that, this and that. But apart from that, I say, then you told them like, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I feel like relatively, I will try to be quite secretive, la, like not right. really share. Because it's like, I don't I don't want to tell you already. Then, you know, why yeah. do I want you to know about this space yeah. that Actually, I'm trying to... At which point did your parents realise that you've like famous? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's a- or like have a, has a outsized following? La. Okay, so at 13, right? At my time, <laughs> it was a big like hoo-ha because like um, I shared about losing my virginity. Ooh. So oh was, shit! Yes, so it was like a like a crazy topic, right? No one dares to talk about something like that. Right. And yeah. social media was relatively new at that point. So firstly, putting myself out there. Secondly, talking about such a controversial like, right. topic. It was- Some of you are very young. Yeah. So it was obviously underage, right? So yeah. um, back then, because of this, I think that was my par- that was when my parents kind of knew how online online I was. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I, I obviously tried to hide from them about my like, by putting it on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, smart. Last time we think yeah, we were smart, oh. correct. Yeah. So like, uh, they know, but okay, actually, I don't know how much they know because right. we've never spoken. We've never really spoken about all the things I've put out. 
uh, mm. unless it got me into trouble <laughs> and then we can't avoid the topic, right? Like for example, the virginity one, obviously I got into a bit of shit. La. <laughs> so yeah, because of that one, then I guess uh, that was when they kind of started to put a bit of restriction. Uh, my phone was confiscated. I cannot use my computer. So like right. even Wi-Fi at home was restricted as well. Um, wow, how yeah. you run? Yeah, it was <laughs> quite intense. Now our memory's flooding back, trying to recall also. Right. Like, it was very intensive for a very long period of time. But can I ask, right? Like what made you want to make that post to begin with? Hold up. If you're still here, why not subscribe? Back to the episode. Honestly speaking, right? I feel like I've always been just genuinely honest about my life. Right. Like when people ask me, I also, I'm not afraid to share. So right. when it comes to blogging, it was just me thinking that no one will read this post. Let me just share about something that I've been keeping inside, you know? Like, cause I really don't right. have anyone to talk to about. And it's like, I just feel like I put this out, no one's going to see it lah. Then, right. I mean, really, But do really, you genuinely think at that point no one's going to see it? Maybe a few people, but I didn't think it will blow out of proportion right. That was your first thing that kind of went crazy I, out, right? I personally felt like it was because of that because back then it was like the Friendster era and then yeah. Facebook was emerging and then after that um, because of that thing right I started getting like a lot of Facebook requests Oh, okay but it wasn't direct it wasn't like the post went up today and then tonight I got that, that kind yeah. of result uh, I mean that kind of response but I think it was like someone might have shared something yeah. somewhere and then it kind of just went across the country and you know because social media isn't as intense as now. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like now it's like, okay, there's no like long distance anymore, no? It's like Singapore is Singapore. But last time it's like, if someone from Jurong knows about you and you're from Pasaris, it's like yeah. quite a big deal. Or in terms of your school. Like correct, school, correct, right? correct. Outside so like, circle, correct. So I was from um, Damai Secondary. Um, school, oh, right? serious? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We had this chat like, but like five years ago. 10 years apart. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like when you went there, I, I was teaching. <laughs> 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 okay so yeah anyway because of I think it was because of that la. then right. it was from the Facebook thing then I realised oh shit the post kind of yeah. went viral in that time so yeah then kind of just started my journey with everything else yeah, yeah. so like life kind of sucked after that post went out la. it also propelled you uh, I remember I, you had a very controversial post about side book there, there were a lot of controversy, honestly. Because <laughs> yeah. of how, like I said, right? Because I just share things. Like last time I feel like a bit mindless in that sense. Because like I just share without thinking that it will kind of affect me in a certain way. And because like last time it's just me. Honestly, I feel like I would still be that way if I didn't have kids. Mm. Like I feel like having a family, starting a family of my own made me realise there are certain things that just shouldn't be spoken about. Mm. Which is why I'm like also a lot more, I mean, not that I'm not opinionated, but I just try not to. You keep more to yourself. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. True. That's that, the thing. That's what growing up is yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you realise some things just don't have to be spoken about, you know. Yeah, just yeah. leave it as that. <laughs> yeah. So then, like, when did you start earning money from your blog? I would say 15. 15. Um, that was when I started earning, like, a bit of side cash from, like... Because side cash a lot, bro. I used to, I used to hold a red card. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. That was later on. I think initially it was just blog shops right. engaging me, right. you know, to, like, take photos in their clothes and stuff. So it was a bit more... Okay lah, maybe back then it was still considered a bit more money. Still a lot la, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's fast. I mean, I'm thankful for that period. Do you think earning that amount of money at that young age affected you? No la, But if you ask me, you know, just in general, putting myself out there at a young age did affect me. So it's not just in terms of money. Yeah. Like, in fact, if anything, earning money at a young age made me realise the importance of money. So like, since young, it's always been about saving and like, just making sure that I have enough money for rainy days, you know. And it also like, kind of made me a lot more independent. So even though like, our family background is quite okay, like discern, I would say we are slightly above average. Quite well but my, that. yeah, but my dad in particular is very, very, um, uh, I would say thrifty. Like he saved the dollar by dollar to get to yes, where he is. Yes, 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 yes. And because he himself, like he came from a, a humble background. La. So to him, it's like, he wants me to be that way also. Mm. So even though we had the luxury to spend a little more, he wouldn't. Mm. And because of that, I felt like the need to earn more money to get what I want. So since young, it's like, I always wanted a lot of things, right? I mean, like, I guess 
kind of like putting myself out there also made me realize that there are a lot of things to keep up to. Mm. Like for example, you cannot just sweep and dress yeah. and everything, right? So the, everything the clothes is- that your mother buy you will no longer pass really. <laughs> la. So it's like there are a lot of things that you really had to make like your own decision. Yep, so yep. you cannot just survive on your parents' money and their decisions anymore. So in that sense, like it made me want to earn money even more. La. And I, I, I think it was actually a good thing in that sense because it really made me grow up a lot faster. I, I read yeah. somewhere, I don't know how true it is, that you stopped taking allowance <laughs> since you were 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. once I started earning and it was enough for me to like just survive every day, then yeah, like I stopped taking. I felt like it was not Goodbye. necessary. La. What? Sorry? Survive, yeah. You're doing damn well, guys. <laughs> Survive, la, she can was not, eat, you know? Right. She was not struggling. <laughs> <laughs> so just now you also mentioned that back then you weren't that close to your parents, right? Was mm. there a reason why or something? That- why are you making a wish? It's 11-11. 11, 11. 11, 11 mega sale. So what do you wish for? My mother said if I tell anybody, my wish will not come true. Mmm... I know. Tell me, tell me. I want to know. Yeah, f- <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me faster. I want to know. <laughs> You're wishing for my protein, protein powder, multivitamins to boost your immunity, energy bars and athleisure for your workout needs. Shh. You don't need to wish. Just look at John Paul. <laughs> this 11, 11, get... <laughs> <laughs> this 11, 11, shop on my... <laughs> This 11-11 shop on my protein through shop back to get up to 22% cash back on top of 72% of on-site deals. Ugh. And don't forget to use the promo code SHOPMP. It's not because of the post, but it was because of that incident mm-hmm. that uh, we kind of grew apart because that happened and I felt like they weren't there for me the way I wanted them to be. No, but I completely understand as a mom now, if my kid went through that, yeah. I would be shocked. Actually, and your mom quite lacks with yeah, the yeah, idea. Yeah, like. yeah. So like, I wouldn't know what to do as well and I think it's a difficult situation and it's difficult for any parent to know what to do and there's no manual, right? It's not say like, mm. you like, become a parent and then it comes with a manual and tells you what to do when this kind of things happen. <laughs> yeah, so I understand where they are coming from now that I'm a mom. But back then it was like, why are you not even mm. listening to me? You know, like you hear me out, you know what's going on, but you're not listening. I just felt like no one was there for me the way I wanted them to be. So even like uh, when we, when I was sent for counselling and things like that, right? Now that I'm older, I feel like it was a lot for a 13-year-old to go through. Like to mm. just be sent to different places and it's something that for example I was sent to the police station to make statements right and a lot of police back then they just feel like you are just a bad kid you know Mm. like they they don't think that you really don't know sometimes when you make certain decisions no one has ever guided you in terms of like sex when to have it of course it's like everyone talks about it in school. Right, so in losing your virginity, <laughs> a police report was made. Correct. Right. Okay, so um, to give you a bit more context, it was more of my dad wanted to change my school because of the situation and he just didn't want me to go through everything else la, like dealing with the, the, the guy. And I mean, he just wanted me to cut contact with the the right. other party and because we already like, I think midway through the semester, so the principal did tell him, you know, if you want to change schools, um, you would have to provide a valid reason. Uh, and then he had to say, you know, what happened. And right. because I was underage and the other party was also underage, he said, you know, now that I know this, it's either you or me, we have to make a, we have oh, to lodge wow. a police oh. report. Right. So my dad was actually the one who lodged the police report. Because right. he said like, you know, it's my- But well, then the guy must be damn scared. Uh. Um, in contrary, so I said life kind of sucked after that, right? It was because- Um, he twisted the whole story and put it on me. So like, the story went super far off from how it really happened. So my whole secondary school life was from then on. No, but he has no platform to explain what. Where did his story come from? He was the popular kid in school. Right. So he was one of those kids that had a blog with a quite also a number of eyeballs. La. Like people were looking, people right. were reading. So, um, and maybe like in today's context, you will feel like, okay, la, that's small numbers, right? Small mm. figures. But back then, you know, like for- It was half the school really. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really was, it really felt that way. And I feel like back then, you just go with the flow. It happened and then you just like allow it to happen, right? But today when I think back about it, I realized that a lot of my 
like who I am today, it really started from there because really no one was there to guide me through this whole process and I just had to figure things out myself. Mm. Everyone around me just felt like, Oh, mm, it's yeah, like they're just, they just they condemned me and yeah. they felt like you know at your age you do these kind of things you know you should be condemned and like the reason why I said that my whole life was just messed up from then on was because he gave off the impression on his own platform that I was the one who instigated the whole mm. um, situation and then I led it through to the extent where I got him into the police case mm. Which is damn bizarre la. Like why would I You know And I was just 13 Like for what le? I don't understand okay? But you have to acknowledge You cock up by blogging about it Yeah la, yeah, la, yeah la. So anyway Because of that situation um, Yeah my parents and I Grew apart Because I think I started to talk less Because I felt like They weren't listening right. And naturally When you talk less You know Communication is key right So relationship grew apart <laughs> And then like We were just Very rocky lah From then on Like for a very Very long period of time Actually Until mm. probably In the recent years We started to Become stronger yeah. Was there something That like triggered that? Um, because you have Your own kid I think so I think so Yeah I think it's so cute by the way Such a 10 about 10 baby <laughs> Thank you <laughs> She got two babies though, Thank you, you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah I'm Okay I'm a fan of I'm a fan of Kaizo Let's just <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute, he's so cute. <laughs> it's okay, my Zyla, uh, Zyla's still too young to yeah, watch yeah. this, so she probably won't understand. But yeah, so like, I think it's becoming a parent myself that made me realize a lot of difficulties that they went through. And even though like, there are still some things that I don't really understand, you know, like uh, how come they weren't there for me in the way I wanted them to be, I understand as a parent that it was difficult. Yeah. So yeah, I, I forgive that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I forgive that within myself. La. Not say I forgive them. La. Not yeah. that they were wrong. It's just that I let it go. More of you understand. La, correct, right? correct. So by letting go, I guess it really improved our relationship because there's no longer that barrier. Mm. There's no longer that why you did this to me. Yeah, so... Have you spoken about that since? Not really. Eh. Not really. I, I feel like here and there, whenever we had arguments um in the past, mm. I'll bring it up. But it's never like a like a nice friendly chat. It's always like <laughs> heated moment, heated yeah. argument and then we like talk about this in a heated way. So it's never like a what really happened? Can we talk about it? Right. Yeah. And like until today, like my mom still makes comments like yeah lor, you that time really hopeless. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like But now she can laugh about it. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. But it's just that when she says things like that, I still feel like they, they still feel that what I did... I mean, I agree what I did was wrong, mm. but I just feel like the situation- It could have been, been there. La. Yeah. It, and like you, situ- you, did, you did something that was truly unorthodox at that time. Correct, correct. And you are the one person that used that and despite it all succeeded. <laughs> but I think there is many people we have to acknowledge that if had the same patterns that you did and when they're 11 or 12, most of them are probably in prison, for example. Correct, or correct, today. correct, correct. And I think yeah. if it happened like today, it might have been like 10 times worse. Yeah. 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 We've Actually, like, no. If it happens today, it'll be normal. Really? That's how fucked up this is now. Really? I thought n- more, it, it's more like, you know. I, I guess it's, it's amplified if you, like, yeah, like, because yeah. Yeah, it's not just, back then you were not just a normal like 13 year old. You already had a following as a 13 year old. I so, think like to her earlier point, I mean like with this whole story, there was one quote that, uh, I stumbled upon on Reddit actually because we were looking for an episode to do, Reddit. right? So we actually thought about like what are some like life quotes that has really spoken to you and then like one really stood out to me which says it's not your fault but it is your responsibility. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. and then I think like that's something that Damn. I recently learned. Oh, very chim. Oh. oh, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I yeah. think it pertains quite a bit to your story because mm. like it was really nobody's fault like, that Correct. you were sharing your life. Correct. At that point, it was really, really unorthodox. But mm. I mean, now thinking back, it was your responsibility mm. about how you like handle this. Correct, situation. correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I feel like everything that I went through made me who I am today. So I'm not like regretful because like, honestly, if I didn't, that post didn't happen, mm. I probably won't be, you know, still here. Yeah. Mm. So like, learn from mistakes though. Yeah, mm. so it's like, of course, these kind of things, you know, now that I'm 26, after going through a ton of shit, I know some things have to be avoided. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. They call me again when you're 30. And I was like, ah, then finally you're 30. <laughs> okay. I think you're still going to be surprised yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I'm, by then I'm like 50 plus. Eh. Then I'm like, <laughs> you mentioned a bit about like your struggle with mental health, which was something that you also blocked about, which yes. at that time was something that was less talked about also. Yes. Mm. Yes. How did you get through that? And do you feel like you've now come out of that? So funny, right? Because now like when you talk about it, it's like, 
huh, everyone talk about it. Right? But back then, yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then so now I don't talk about it anymore. Because yeah, <laughs> everyone talks about it. It's like... Content creator. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, like, bo-bien, bo-bien. it's like, the thing is like, when you talk about such things today, it feels very un- like yeah. ingenuine because yeah. it feels like you're just trying to create content. Like if today I come out and say that, oh, I had depression, people will just be like, some more or like yeah. you had depression. But it's like if five years ago, I came out and talked about it, like people will view it differently. They will really like be like, shit, you have depression. So like, I feel that in today's context, it's like, I just don't really talk about all this anymore if I don't genuinely feel for something that needs to be talked about. Unless it's like, I can be heavily involved on how to get someone through something. I feel like there's no point being involved. But I think it's an interesting point that like, now that it's so much more talked about, Mm. it almost feels like it's brushed off. It's almost, yeah, no point talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, honestly, very simple and straightforward. It's just my kids. Like, without my kids, I think I'll still be in that mess I was in when I last met John Nady. Sorry, how old were you? When <laughs> it's you, true though. When you had it's yeah, true though. I was really in a mess. So I was 21 when I was pregnant with him. Ding. <laughs> you were 21? Yeah, is it 21? Uh, his so last time you met was twi- when 20. she was 21. Yeah, what the f***? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So back then you had a reason to be shocked. La. <laughs> 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 so everything boils down to that story again. So at 13, that happened and it really screwed up my mentality on relationship Mm. you know like my whole I would say concept of what a healthy relationship should be was messed up so at that point that guy who I was heavily involved in in many different ways he cheated on me and that was my first ever relationship he cheated on me with my best friend so honestly it it sounds no but I get downplayed a lot because at 13 years old what serious relationship can you have Ooh, right yeah. so like honestly when you tell people about this they don't take you seriously and they think like honestly what can happen out of it yeah. but it really affected my entire journey when it comes mm. to men and boys mm. yeah. because from then on it's like trust was broken my perspective towards relationship and boys in general was just is that lah so mm. I didn't really take care of myself so I was in a situation where I felt like in order to receive love you have to give yourself to that person. Mm. For many, many years, before I met my husband, I was in that situation where I just kept giving and to a point where I was losing myself. And because of that, I didn't have healthy friendships as well because I always prioritized my relationships with men or boys, partially also because of my distance with my dad. I felt like I needed that kind of love from a man or from a boy to fill up that void. So, I never had a break from relationships at all since 13 years old until I met my husband. It was, I think, the longest I went and I've never spoken about this publicly before. It was like maybe two weeks. Single. Yeah. Yeah. And even that two weeks, maybe I was still talking to someone. It's just that we are not... It's haven't started yet. It's the pregame. Correct, (laughs) correct, correct. So yeah, it was so unhealthy and it was not just unhealthy for the relationships that I was involved in. It was also very unhealthy, unhealthy for my mental health la. so yeah. because of that it really affected a lot of other things like I said my friendships my relationships with other people and obviously people look at me in a different way also la. like you know they call me sluts these kind of things I hear it very often from like people who knew my situation la. so honestly when you're at that age and you receive this kind of comments I felt like it was really a lot to take in because yeah. in today's context, there are really a lot of platforms and channels where you can seek help and really understand a little more on what's going on. You can really educate yourself in that way. But back then, there's really no help. And it's like, mm. although I'm on the internet, it's also limited access to yeah. all these platforms. The internet now. wasn't great yet. Correct. And back then, it's like you search for like help, right? They give you like some dodgy sus counselling centre and then it's like, you are not sure of what can be said to them. Mm -hmm. So there were many times where uh, trust was breached. So like I told them what was going on and then they either tell my school or tell my parents. Oh shit. Yeah. And The system used to be like that. The system used to fool itself to thinking that that was a responsible thing to do. Correct, correct. Yeah, then it makes the patient or whoever the person is stop coming back right? mm. and then they, they kind of changed it. All right. So because of that, I just stopped. La. And for a very long period of time, I just felt like it was very scary to open up to therapists or like psychologists, you know, like this kind of things. La. Yeah. Basically, anywhere that offers help, it scares me because the traditional conventional way of seeking help 
didn't work for me. Mm. So like to me, it's a scary world. Yeah, you've been burned before. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. But like when we when we were closer, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay lah. We still close. Think, I was trying to think how do I say that. Uh, <laughs> closer to her when she was younger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was <laughs> cute. <laughs> no, so like I mean to be honest, I, I didn't know her very long, and I don't know what got our friendship like going for. Maybe it's a, it was not a very maybe like a one year period mm, where we kept mm, in touch, right? Mm. And I remember forming this impression of her that. Because she feels very deeply, but yes, she does have a very strong need to be loved. But because she loves so deeply, then it never ever feels enough and mm-hmm. she has a lot to give. Yeah. When she hangs around people of her own age, they are not at their level of maturity or have the resources that she has. Because she came from a study well-to-do family. I mean, okay, lah, okay lah, it was well-to-do family <laughs> lah, by most standards. But then she made her own money, which was good money, right? Her social points was my monthly salary. <laughs> And her, <laughs> and she had following, yeah. right? Yeah, and that made her like very easy to use, given her entire complex of at that stage of wanting to be loved in the way that she loves. Yeah, that was what I remember. You gonna cry? Eh? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was what I remember about her. That's I feel like wow, quite endless. Like you know, mm. in order to get the love that she's so sick, she has to stop loving. Mm. Yeah. It is, oh, you, you right. put it very nicely yes 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 yeah for a very long period of time it's like why is it that you know like my concept of love is that you can just really love someone and then you you, you just hope that they reciprocate right yeah. but then the thing is like my concept of love through all the bad relationships is that oh no you have to play hard to get yeah, you have to play yeah. mind games oh then the, the guy will love you why doesn't it come naturally why is it that I can't just like pour my heart out give my entire yeah. like you know like you're ahead, of your, you. time, you're ahead yeah, of your time yeah so it's like <laughs> like it's just it really messes with your your mindset on like so that's why right even though I don't agree like you know there should be an like a proper age to start dating I do feel that at 13 or like around the age it really messes up your life if mm. things don't go well mm. so I kind of understand why they say like oh you're too young to be in a relationship yeah. you know that kind of thing because sometimes it's really not about your maturity at that level but sometimes it's about other people yeah, yeah surrounding you whether they can assist you whether they can yeah, yeah so it's like, like you can be mature for your own age but if the your circle don't see the, don't recognize your maturity as maturity mm-hmm. then you feel like a jackass correct <laughs> Yeah, so like if you you don't know, you just fuck it up once, mm. then that's the end. La. That's your concept of relationship and it never changes mm. until you finally, hopefully meet the right person. Like when you were in and out of all these relationships, right? did you genuinely feel like you liked the guys or was it just really looking for someone to love you? Um, I always tell people, right? Like I used to say this thing where uh, you think you really love someone until you realise that no, you just didn't love yourself enough to step out of the relationship. Damn. Like, you get what I mean? Yeah. Because the thing is, in that relationship, I'm so caught up with it. I think like, oh, I really, really, really love you. I will die without you. I'll do anything for you. But then after that, when you step out of it, you realise, shit. And she would want it. She damn stupid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah. So it's like, you realise, shit, it's, it's not that I love you. I just didn't love myself enough yeah. to walk away. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's that law. Obviously, now that I'm out of it, right, I would say that maybe that wasn't love, but it was love in that moment. Yeah. You know, like for me, it was. It like, was what you needed, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, there weren't any intentions. It's not like I used you to, like, fill a void or anything like right. that. But it's just how you feel, or and then you just act on it, you know? At what point do you realize those things? Because, like, you mentioned a few things, right? You realize that quite a lot of, like, the, the mental health issues kind of stem back from that incident when you were 13, but mm. also, like, your perception of boys. Like, at what point do you realize this? Was this a recent thing, or did you speak to someone eventually about it? I would say, uh, maybe recently because I actually finally decided to seek help right. properly. So the last time I actually spoke to someone before this was maybe when I was 13, right? So that was when everything happened and those kind of help wasn't because I seeked for it. It was more like I was sent to it, right? Yeah. And then... Um, oh, damn shit, huh? You were made to go because you lost your yes, pregnancy. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So uh, for this one, um, it was actually a huge step because for so many years, and you would think, why now, right? Everything seems okay with my life. But I feel like everything really boils down to my kids. Like, mm. I just feel like if I don't get myself sorted out, eventually it will come back to me, which is already coming back to me. For example, I feel like if I don't have a proper concept of a healthy relationship how do I help my kids build a healthy relationship mm. even though now I'm in a technically a healthy relationship right but everything was brought together not planned 
in mm, that sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's well, not... Can we be more explicit on what you did? <laughs> you want to elaborate yeah. on... Yes, yes, yes. If I ask, it's, it's going to sound Yes, yes, yes. Weird. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> As in like, obviously, my first pregnancy was unplanned and you know, we got married partially because of the pregnancy, mm. right? So everything moved forward so quickly. To Your wedding gown though. <laughs> like in a good way or bad? Nice. <laughs> okay. Wait, yeah. so before that, y'all had not yet talked about marriage or already talked about and then this just accelerated? We did, but yeah, it accelerated okay. it. But obviously, we were not at that point. I mean, I was 21. Yeah. So yeah. even if we talked about it, it was like, maybe Bo-pa not. Na, yeah, 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 yeah. Just talk for fun, you know, like really just kids talking kind of shit. So it's like, like I mean, people in love talking, you know, like the reason why I say everything boys out of the kids is because like recently when there are situations where I had to put myself in my son's situation and think about problem solving, right? Like solving some of his issues. Not say like he understands relationships or anything, yeah, but they're just- figure out what issues he has. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe he got girlfriend eh? No, 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 no. Not, not hey, I won't be surprised eh? He's <laughs> cute da. No, no, no. But it impacted me in a way like, for example, because I don't really have a very healthy relationship with my parents back then, I don't know how to be there for him the way that I think people expect a parent to be there mm, sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? Like I start like questioning, is this the right thing to do? Is this not the right thing to do? But in general, it's just a lot of questioning and I feel like it's really draining me out because I feel like I don't have a voice of my own in terms of my values. Right. My values are all messed up. It's always someone else's opinion. Like my parents tell me, I have to behave a certain way. Otherwise, people will judge me. Or like, I have to do this, I have to do that. So my whole life is kind of dictated in that sense where I fear judgment. I really fear judgment. It's so bad to an extent where, so this is what I'm implying. It's like, I fear judgment to an extent where it's running off on my kids. Like in a sense where like, I don't allow certain things to happen or certain things, for example, if he's rowdy in public right now, do I want him to stop being rowdy because I feel that it's wrong? Or is it because my parents used to tell me it's wrong? Right. You know what I mean? Right. This kind of thing. And it's really driving me crazy because every time something like that happens, I go into this whole mental breakdown like I really don't know what to do. Right. So I realise this cannot go on. But isn't this every every parent? No, no, no. But so, hers is very rooted in her relationship with her parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So like, my biggest problem is this fear of judgement. Because of how early I put myself on the internet and how badly judged I was throughout almost my half my life, right? Mm. I feel like there's always this fear of judgement and then it's to an extent where sometimes, obviously everyone cares about what people think of them to a certain extent, right? So I feel like it's that. It's because people used to tell me I cannot do this and I cannot do that. And then now I'm telling my kids the same thing, but I don't really feel that way. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's you don't like, know where the compass is. Correct, yeah. correct. So like, I feel like I, I needed someone to properly guide me la, like with my thoughts and to tell me, is there really a, a problem that I have to fix? And that was when I found out there's really a problem I have to fix. La. Right. So Oh, um, no shit, really? Yeah, so like after speaking for only one session, um, she my, my therapist did share with me that there, there is a, a very obvious like issue with me. La. Like the problem is that I really have um no values of my own in, in that sense. Like in that sense, like I really don't know how I want things to be, whether I really want it to be that way, or is it because it's my parents' voice? Mm. Like am I living in their shadows kind of thing, you know? So like I feel like it's that mm. now and I'm trying to work on that. And the reason why I took the step forward was because of my kids. La. I really wouldn't have gone for it if I didn't have kids, I feel. Yeah. Because like, if I didn't have kids, I would just feel like I can sort this out on my own, which is the recurrent like- as in Now it, you live for more than yourself. Correct, like. correct. Yeah. And I, I just feel that, you know, like if I don't work on this problem, I don't want them to ever follow my footsteps to, to deal with the same issues that I dealt with. Yeah, so yeah, it's really because of them that I decided to do this. Just now you mentioned that before you met Han, right, you actually had a very different perception of relationships. What was different about him? I think in every other relationship. Not like men. No. Actually, not very like this. But happy, happy man. <laughs> yala, yala, yala. I mean, okay, I would say that um, in every other relationship I was in before him, it was more of me trying to fix someone. But with uh, him, I felt like he was trying to fix me. Uh-huh. Fix me in the sense where, not trying to change me, but he was helping me. Yeah. Mm. So he could deal with how broken I was as a person and he didn't mind that. 
But whereas with every other guy I was with, it was more of like the moment I started to show my true colours in that sense. Like, you know, I started to become a bit more like... Uh, Needy. Yeah. Then... It's like no I'm goal. just guessing. Uh, it's not because yeah, no, I know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know that about her. Uh, I just <laughs> guessing. <laughs> <me>. <laughs> yeah. Knows my life story already. Why no, no. Like it was just a wild guess. I, I thought was like, you're feeling forward. <laughs> I just throw something out. Yeah, but yeah. So like with him, it's like he was very patient with me, I would say. Right. He like, doesn't look like a patient man. Yeah. And <laughs> yes, he looks like a very Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess it's, I won't say it's age, but more like he's maturity level. So he's very responsible as a person. So I feel like with whatever he gets involved in, he'll take full responsibility of it. Law. So like I was like in a big mess right before I met him, right? And I guess it was also because of the chase, like, you know, like want to impress me. So he, he did whatever it, 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 um, he was supposed to do to kind of like get me to agree to be in a relationship with him, right? But, <laughs> but the thing is like, even after we got together and even when things were really, really bad, like obviously I was still me, right? So there were times where I was still needy. There were times where I still kind of like went back into that whole black hole. But like, he was okay. He never left. Yeah, yeah. he never left. He really like, worked it out with me and it really, really helped me. For you so hang huh? Yeah, yeah. It worked. It helped me with my yeah. confidence, I guess. Yeah. So I feel like I changed a lot because of the kids and him. Yeah. Like because of a stable, healthy relationship that I have with my family now, it really helped me as a person to have a healthy relationship with myself. So you talk about like that healthy relationship that you have with your parents now. Like was that before after the adoption reveal that you Oof. realized? Uh, I would say after it was it kind of helped with everything else so like I found out about it in 2018 if I'm not wrong right. shortly after I gave birth to Kai I don't know if I already shared about this but I think it was because I needed some health information from them and they were uncertain about it like the whole thing was a bit sus was because I have a child now right like I know yeah. what's going on so like that was when I questioned them law, and then they decided that it's time to tell me now that I've I have a family of my own. Wait, sorry, is it because your blood type is neither of theirs? Something like that. No, 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 no. It was it, about not, them not knowing about pregnancy related. Re family. Something got to do with it. I can't really remember what exactly happened, but it was just the whole pregnancy and, you know, having a child and then all the things that were kind of strange. La. Like, my mom would say, wow, your baby kicks ah. It's like every baby kicks in the mouth. <laughs> like I was, it was right. like, how come she was? But that's such a huge leap though. Yeah. She she that's a no, it's like, <laughs> at some point you just sit down and go like, am I a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so mother must like, have dropped the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she gave it away a, a couple of times. La. Then, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. You so well for like how many yeah. years? Yeah, no, actually no. I suspected way back. Oh, and it was always my mom. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, when, when you made the announcement, <laughs> I always had the impression you told me you suspected before. I think so. Yeah. I think so. It was not a, something you kept to yourself. Correct. Like, I think I started suspecting when I was in... I was seven. Primary school. Seven? Wow. Yes, yes. Early. Yes. Be the first ever giveaway was because we had, you know, health checkup. Uh. And then in my health booklet, I didn't have a blood type. It was empty. And everyone else in my class had it. Right. So after that, when I asked my mom what's my blood type, she don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but of course, back then as a seven-year-old, you won't question much. Like, yeah. you just think, oh, I mean, my dad don't know my blood type. Was yeah, so bad. you just think you don't know. Lo. But then there were so many like... My um, blood type is impossible to be for my parents. One. What do you mean? I'm O, my mom is A, oh, oh, oh. A, A, B. Then my dad is a B, I think. But, uh, yeah. You can have regrets. Oh, sorry, my O's. dad is a O. Two people can have regressive O's. But A and B is always dominant. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. I think you have some... Never mind, but it's okay. Like, it doesn't Ooh. matter. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> like, anyway, right? I feel like the way you reacted to the confirmation that you were adopted, right? Mm. Did you expect to react the way you did? Uh, yes, I was very affected about it yeah, when I first found out about su it. Yeah, surprises me because... But, but then again, I'm not adopted, so I'll yeah. never know how it feels like. But yeah. just in my head, if I realise now my parents not my parents, right? I'll be like... Okay. Mm. Yeah. Can I just tell you something? So for a very long period of time actually even my parents don't really know much about this which is like I I was very affected not because like oh you know like I'm adopted adopted but it was more of I felt like I didn't belong anywhere right like I just felt like oh all these people are not actually my family members and everyone around me knew that I was not part of the family mm. for like 
20 years of my life, everyone knew except me. So like, all this while, did everyone actually see me as an outsider? Like, I started to have all these questions. It's not about like, oh, it doesn't matter whether they are your biological... Yeah. It's not about that. It was just like, I really didn't feel a sense of belonging for a very long period of time. Even to a point where like, when I want to share something with my parents, I was like, would they feel like I'm very burdened? Like if, because I'm not their daughter, you know? No, but by the time you confirmed it, you are a grown-ass person already. Right? Yeah, but the thing is, I think... I was not prepared for the confirmation. Right. Like I was prepared to get either brushed off again, which happens so many times over you the years. Before, yeah. Either that or I was just expecting a no la, you know, that kind of very mm. patronizing answer la. I wasn't expecting a uh-huh. you are. You know, like so I was it's like it's very it's very funny because you know, like you suspect it already, then how come you Yeah, you feel like you've always known but correct, when you confirm you're right. As a person, I'm I'm naturally just an overthinker la. so I was maybe probably just overthinking but that was that whole situation and then I just felt like because of that right my kids actually meant like a thousand times more to me so back yeah. then it was just Kaizo right you now have blood in Singapore right yeah like it was really like my true blood and soul you know it's like yeah. I just feel like there's no one else like my yeah. kids are my only family like blood related yeah. family so they mean so much more than Oh, I got chills. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So okay. like, yeah, did, did yeah. your parents meant to take it to the grave or is it like... Yes, my mom said, my mom said so. But she's the one that's been given. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Come on, Andy. <laughs> my mom's, not, cute, my mom's cute. not good at keeping secrets. Yeah. 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 And so no, wait, she, those are the best kind of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are very genuine, right? Yeah. So I think she doesn't realise it. Every time she sleeps. No, can you imagine what's going through her head though? Like, <laughs> like when like 13 years old, you go and block about losing your virginity. Yeah. Then she's like, what? I go and... You know, <laughs> <laughs> the people that know is like, cool, I don't know. <laughs> Oh my, actually, right? yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. So, well, she went through a lot, so to be honest. Yes, yes. And she followed through. Mm. Mm. Yes. Do you think you would rather not have known? No, I think I think I'm happier. Because like like I said, it really helped with our relationship and mm. we became so much closer. Like and your mother's love to you, you now see yeah, it more detailed. Correct, as correct, correct. To obligatory, right? Yeah, I was just sharing about it, like how it means so much more. Mm. Because it's like a mom's love is like a mom's love, right? But then when they love you so much more, even though I'm not Not because they have to, yeah, they want correct. to. Yeah. It's not like an obligation anymore. Yeah. And it's like it just means a lot more. So I just feel that after since I knew about it, it's like a whole different perspective. Like I kind of like gain, I would say respect for the both of them in a different mm. way. Mm. Not just as my parents, but as people, you know, like how they are able to deal with me <laughs> for so many years. <laughs> like everything, just everything. So like, yeah, I, I didn't regret. No it's way. quite noble. Uh. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's so funny how like, you, you mentioned that like, you guys were kind of a straight, uh, kind of. Yeah. And then they wanted to take this to the grave when actually if they revealed it to you earlier, it could have. But maybe, maybe it was too soon. No, it, it could have gone, also. it could have yeah. gone. Yeah, I know. And knowing my character when I was younger, like it could have really. You would have left home, I think. Yeah, I think I would have. Yeah. Like I would have taken that chance as an excuse yeah. to leave house. Also yeah, yeah. Being an asshole yeah, 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 yeah. Like you're not my parent anyway. Yeah, like let me just like continue with Yeah, I think I would have. Like, yeah, I was in that whole. Everything hole. in its right time. This was also something that people gave you backlash for because you made a video about it. So like, why? <laughs> I don't know what better way to put yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, like I said earlier on, I think all my life, it's just, it's my character or like my persona to just share. Yeah. You know, I've just been very honest about everything that's going on in my life. This idea actually came about years back where I wanted to do a series and the reason why I wanted to do a series was because I sat down one day and I was thinking, you know, like throughout my life, um, the course of my whole career, I've always been very honest, but are there things that I've not been honest about? And that was when I started to think of all these things. So why wasn't I honest about it? Was it because of embarrassment? Was it because I was afraid of how I'll be judged by the public? Mm. You know, things like that. So that was when I decided, you know, like, okay, let's just be completely transparent. So it was supposed to be a series of different things that I was not honest about, starting with how I didn't pass my O-levels. So there was actually a video which didn't blow up as as badly as this lah or 
yeah, in a sense. So that one I actually shared. And for many years, when people ask me about this, I try to avoid the topic or I even lied about it maybe. Mm. I can't remember. Lah, but I just wanted to be honest. And then that was actually part of the series. It's just that because um, I had to get my parents to agree with this video, I had to think about whether it's suitable to even be shared mm. at which point because you know I was pregnant in a in a short period of time right yeah. so like the way you got back into shape though <laughs> thank you so like there were a lot of this kind of situations where I held back la, like whether I should proceed to do this mm. video so it took some time before this video came up following the old levels one which was why it, I guess people forgot about that one and didn't realise it's actually an, a follow up yeah, right. but now that that video's up I kind of not want to talk about the other things really because some of the things I feel like it's not really relevant anymore yeah Yeah, and at the end of the day I'm just a content creator and so like I, I just feel that apart from being genuine about my experiences I constantly think of things that I have to share with yeah. people, mm. you know. It's kind of just being that voice for people who mm. go through the same things. Mm. So like sharing about my adoption, right? It was like, I believe there are so many people who are adopted, but don't talk about yeah. it. And why? Why don't people talk about it? It's, it? it's not an embarrassing, it's not really an, I don't know, like, for different yeah. people, different things. <laughs> but like for me- Are you trying to address people that ask why, why do you have to do a video about it? Correct. Yeah, mm. so like, so even like with um, the old levels one, like I felt like I wanted to be the voice. Like I wanted to give people the courage yeah. to to really like- It's not dive. the end of the- Yeah, level. correct. Oh. Like as in, that, that was my true intention. Yeah. So just maybe to round things off, right? Like going forward, what are some things that you're excited about? Especially like there are two brands that you started and power and chanted, right? Do you want to share a bit about that? Yeah, so like um, actually these things are all like, part of my life as well. So since young, I've always been into like hair, which is what Enchanted is about. So hair accessories or like hair related things. Yeah, I've been and staring at your hair this whole time. I don't know how you <laughs> No, 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 mm. it's not that I mean. Is everything real? Yeah, yeah. It's your my hair. hair. Yeah, it's oh, my hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Dude, it's so complex, look at it. Yeah, I look, yeah. I look. Yeah. <laughs> so fun fact, my biological dad is actually a hairdresser. Oh, you oh. found him? Wait, you found how him? did you find him? <laughs> no, I didn't find him. Oh, no, 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 I didn't find him. My parents told me about it. Like uh, my adopt, uh, yeah, my adopt, adoptive parents actually told me about it. I was like really, really surprised because since I was maybe two or three, I was always into like cutting hair or like, you know, oh. like hair related stuff. Wait, so, whose hair were you cutting at two like, years old? Like, like play cutting. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So like, I was always very into all this hair related stuff. And then like, when I found, oh shit, my yeah. father yeah. is actually a hairdresser. So, oh, that makes sense now, you know, Ki kind of more sense. Yeah, so Enchanted is all about hair, you know, my love for this. And to me, it's like, I've always wanted to start a brand of my own. Mm. And what more than uh, something that I'm interested in and something I'm so passionate about. And then for Empower, if you realise, um, these are all like wordplays of my own name. So it's, it's like- It's spelled N-N. Yes, correct. N -N power. So the whole idea came about I also know. years back. Yeah. Oh, you know about that one, right? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was kidding. I no, think I shared No, I mean, I know the N-N. I know the N-N. Right, right, right. Sorry, right. Sorry, yeah. But yeah, so it's like, um, to me, right, it was the concept of like an empire. Yeah, so that's the the name of this empire. Yes, empire. Right. So like empire has like it it kind of like uh, falls into different categories. So uh, those are feelings at one point where I felt like I want to be I want to be empowering. You know, like I want people to stay enchanting. Right. So like these are kind of concepts that I I had a couple of years back. So I always knew I wanted to do this. It's just that I don't know when and how and like you know this kind of things lah. so to share a bit more about Empower so I felt like you know um, all these years of being in the public eye I've always had my insecurities and with um, body issues and everything so it's something that I grew up with and I also kind of not say I'm over it but like I kind of just embraced it after so long right so um, Empower Empower is more on like health and wellness. It's kind of things that uh, I kind of want to help people with. So like my first product is actually a hair supplement. It's also hair related, right? But it's not about hair. It's just things like wellness. Lah. Right, so right. Things to empower people, make people feel good, feel better. So yeah, and um, there are possibly more 
and something coming up. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and her name so easy to find. My name impossible. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Joe. <laughs> yeah. Like Joe Chanta just doesn't work, you know. <laughs> I just know not many words that start with Joe. <laughs> but, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> but do you want to meet your biological parents? Uh, out of curiosity, yes. Yeah. Like I'm still curious, you know, like who they are. But not not to call them mom and dad, like, right? Just to meet them. If I were to ever do that, it's like out of respect. Yeah. You know, yeah. but like I feel like I'm not ob- You're not obliged to call them mom and dad. They didn't raise you. Mixed feelings. Really? Okay. Mixed feelings. I don't think I can call another person mom and dad. Like no. it, it took the life out of me to call my wife's parents. But I feel like I grew up <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you, but you didn't raise you. Yeah, I love them. Same, I, same, I, I love same, them same. like an in-law, la, you know. Yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, like yeah. thank you for raising her, but you're not my parents, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like for me it's more of like out of respect in that sense. Like if I say I'm I feel like the obligation, right? Yeah. It's because of respect. Like I feel like I grew up in an environment where my parents always tell me to be respectful. Like I have to right. call this person auntie or uncle or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so I feel like if I have to call them that it's because I feel like I have to. Mm. Not because I'm yeah. I feel like I want to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So out of curiosity, yes, I do wanna know how they're doing. Do you uh, have a the, clue on where to begin? Yeah. No. They're not in contact okay, with okay. No, not at all. Oh. Stay tuned for MOSG Uncovered. <laughs> <laughs> we can have yeah, yeah, yeah. Find her parents what? <laughs> yeah, we find her parents, we find her parents. <laughs> <laughs> Please help me out. <laughs> Okay, so thank you Naomi for being here today and sharing a lot of her life with us. We also have a part two coming up, so stay tuned for that. Thank okay, you. like, share, subscribe. In the meantime, see you. Sorry, I was just thinking about something fucking f***ed up. <laughs> yes. So we got from something insightful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Has your, <laughs> has your mother ever lamented to you like, like whenever you did something wrong, like you cock up, maybe your grades were shit or what, right? Uh, then she say, hey, I carry you for nine years. That shit ever said. <laughs> And now you turn back and say, yo! <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think it happened. Anymore. No, 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 no.